guys, before we going to discuss about the topic, let's have an overview that related to the topic. As we know, every country has its own concerns. So, what concerns are worried in most countries? There are many, for example, crime and violence, poverty, social inequality, inflation, unemployment, coronavirus, and etc. But here, in this video, we will discuss more about inflation and the unemployment. Inflation is the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. Inflation is typically a broad measure, such as the overall increase in the prices of goods and services in an economy or the increase in the cost of living in the country. That is because of a decrease in the purchasing power of money. The unemployment rate is the percentage of the total labor force that is unemployed but actively seeking employment and willing to work. High rates of unemployment are a signal of economic distress, while extremely low rates of unemployment may signal an overheated economy. Causes of inflation. In here, I give three causes. There are demand pool, cost push, and expansion of the money supply. Demand pull happens when an increase in the demand for goods and services leads producers to raise prices to maximize profits. Cost push occurs when producers rise prices because their costs have gone up. Expansion of the money supply Unexpanded money supply can also drive demand pull inflation. This happens when the central bank prints money at a rate higher than the growth rate of the economy. With more money in circulation, demand grows and prices go up. Causes of unemployment The reduction in aggregate demand or the failure of the labor market to absorb the existing workforce. Low level of education or skills, lack of motivation. A curve that can show the relationship between them called Phillips Curve. So Phillips Curve will be the main topic of this video. Phillips Curve is an attempt to describe the macroeconomic trade-off between those two. Phillips Curve states that inflation and unemployment have an inverse relationship. Higher inflation is associated with lower unemployment and vice versa. The logic behind the Phillips curve is based on the traditional macroeconomic model of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Since it is often the case that inflation is the result of increased aggregate demand for goods and services, it makes sense that higher levels of inflation would be linked to higher levels of output, and therefore lower unemployment. A brief history about it, William Phillips is the one who invented the Phillips curve. He is a New Zealand-born economist, wrote a paper in 1958 titled the relation between unemployment and the rate of change of money wage rates in the United Kingdom, 1861 to 19. 57, which was published in the Quarterly Journal Economica. That's why the curve name is Phillips Curve, taken from the last name of the inventor. In the 1950s and 1960s, there was a remarkably smooth relationship between the unemployment rate and rate of inflation. The data points fit fairly closely around a downward sloping curve because the primary source of variation in the economy was demand, not cost. In general, the higher the unemployment rate is, the lower the rate of inflation. However, the original concept has been somewhat disproven empirically due to the occurrence of stagflation in the 1970s when there were high levels of work inflation and unemployment. 
The word stagflation means a period when slow economy growth and joblessness coincide with rising inflation. In the 1970s, both demand and cost were varying so no obvious relationship between the unemployment rate and the inflation rate was appearing. Another reason the Phillips curve is not stable expectations. It so happened that inflationary expectations were quite stable in the 1950s and 1960s. If the rate of inflation depends on expectations, the Phillips curve will shift as expectations change. For example, if inflationary expectations increase, the result will be an increase in the rate of inflation, even though the unemployment rate may not have changed. In this case, the Phillips curve will shift to the right. If inflationary expectations decrease, the Phillips curve will shift to the left. There will be less inflation at any given level of the unemployment rate. With inflationary expectations not changing very much, there were no major shifts of the Phillips curve, a situation that helps explain its stability during the period. Still, macroeconomic models used by the world's central banks still rely on the Phillips curve as a tool for their inflation forecasts, even though those forecasts have been unreliable because economies soon learned that the relationship between inflation and employment was not as simple as they had previously thought. The Phillips curve describes the effect on unemployment for both positive and negative inflation rates. Negative inflation is referred to as deflation. Unemployment is lower than the natural rate when inflation is positive and unemployment is higher than the natural rate when inflation is negative. Short run Phillips curve. The curve is shown at the low. So when the economy is overheating, there is low unemployment but high inflation. When there is recession, unemployment is high but inflation is low. So what is a recession? A recession is a period of declining economic performance across an entire economy that lasts for several months. During a recession, the economy struggles, people lose work, companies make fewer sales, and the country's overall economic output declines. Shifting Short-Run Phillips Curve When a vital resource in the production becomes more expensive, Production costs increase and firms will produce lesser quantities of output at every price level. This increase in resource costs will decrease in aggregate supply. As it decreases, price levels will increase through cost push inflation and output will decrease as consumers reduce the aggregate quantity demanded. When sealing back their output, firms will fire workers, causing the unemployment rate increase in the economy. By shifting the short-run Phillips curve to the right, there will be an increase in the inflation rate as well as an increase in the unemployment rate. Long-run Phillips curve. The vertical slope means the constant relationship between the inflation rate and unemployment rate. Unemployment rate doesn't change even when price levels change. It results the natural rate of unemployment at which the economy can produce its full capacity level of output. Natural rate of unemployment refers to unemployment that occurs as a normal part of the functioning of the economy. It is sometimes taken as the sum of frictional unemployment and structural unemployment. Supply side policies, that's the only way the long term to reduce the natural rate of unemployment. To see an increase in growth and a reduction in unemployment with lower rates of inflation, the only way to do that is to increase a long run aggregate supply to use supply side policies and on this curve that will shift to the left. 
If fractional unemployment decreases because job matching abilities improve, then the long run Phillips curve will shift to the left. While if there is an increase in structural unemployment, because workers' job skills become obsolete, then the long run Phillips curve will shift to the right. What happens in the long run when AD increases? Increase in aggregate demand, for example, because of a rise in consumption, it will increase in price and output, lead to an increase in demand for inflation. However, the short-run Phillips curve is limited because it doesn't say how economy will self-adjust to the NRU. The monitor is adapted to show that it can be back to the level. So workers would change their wage expectations, revise upwards, and demand high wage will increase cost of production of firms and shift aggregate supply to the left, beginning to raise cost push inflation. When we connect two points together, we will get the long-run Phillips curve. Example, for the data itself, unemployment rate and inflation rate for February, taken from Baran Pusat Statistical website for consecutive six years from 2017 to 2022. Later, we will learn how to make the curve in Microsoft Excel. So we will take the data from the previous slide and we will copy it into Microsoft Excel. Make sure the data are correct and if you can, please double check one by one. Go to the insert bar and click the scatter one. Then it will display automatically on the screen. Choose another layout to see the slope. Revise the title of X and Y axis with unemployment rate and inflation rate. In here, I changed the numbers of axes so we can clearly see how the slope is. That's the result, so we will have an inverse relationship between unemployment rate and inflation rate. That's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to leave a like for this video.